Okay, it looks like we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. I uh, want to thank you for participating today. We are now joined by Cameron Thomas, and we'll begin the press conference. We ask that you use the raise hand function. Uh, and if you'd like to ask a question, we'd ask that you limit it, uh, if you can, to one question, unless you need a follow-up. But we are going to go ahead and get started first with uh, Ron Higgins from Tiger Rag. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, Cam, uh, I guess uh, in the second half, once y'all kind of got it going, did you feel like to put the ball in your hands and drive to the basket and create contact because they didn't have much of a, they had no bench. Was that the, was that the feeling? Because it seemed like when you drove, people got out of the way, you tried to get out of the way. Yeah. I mean, in the second half, I just wanted to, um, attack the basket. Um, my, my three years and shots were a little off in the first half. So I had to get going by getting to the free throw line, getting to the basket. And that's how I got going. And that's what propelled us to win today. Next question, next question is from Glenn West, SI. Yeah, hey, Cam. You know, so for really a lot of the, the second half and really throughout the entire game, it really seemed like Andre was just such a crucial part to y'all's win tonight. I mean, just, just talk about his effort. It really just seemed like a career day for him. And just, just talk about his performance. Uh, Andre Hyatt played great. Uh, Dre was on the glass, offensive glass, defensive glass in the first half. And um, he hit big shots when we needed to. I think he hit one three at the top of the key because the big was sitting in the paint. And he had a lot of offensive rebound putbacks. And I think that's what helped us. And, and uh, we're going to need Dre to, to make a deep run in the tournament. So I feel like this was a great, great starting point for him. OK, reminder, we're going to need your name and affiliation. So those of you, Michael Cobble and Jared Joseph, if you can text me your affiliation at 812-322-1437, I would appreciate it. Our next uh, guest is going to be uh, Billy. Embody from 247 Sports. Hey, Cam. Uh, Javante didn't really have, a, you know, a huge day on as far as, you know, scoring, but he had zero turnovers. Seemed like he really kept you guys rolling. Uh, how important was he in, in today's win and just being able to run the offense and get you guys into good positions to make plays? No, it was very important, especially for him to not have any turnovers. And that just kept us with extra possessions that we needed. And Javante and is going to bounce back on Monday. So... I mean, today was just a rough day for him. I mean, first game of the tournament, so I think he'll be fine on Monday. Next question, Scott Rabelais from the Baton Rouge paper. Scott, are you there? There we go. Sorry. The, the mute thing was uh, invisible on my screen. Cam, uh, obviously not the offensive start that you guys wanted, but Joe, again, your defense, uh, as it did in the SEC tournament, came up uh, big for you guys. What, what worked well for you today? What was the plan to go against them? Uh, obviously, Lofton was a great outside scorer, and you had Osuni inside, who was uh, a problem. Yeah, I mean, since our shots weren't falling, uh, we had to really lock in on defense and get stops because we only had like four points, I think, with 11 minutes left in the first half. So we really had to sit down and get stops. And um, the game plan was to, just to um, keep them out the paint and contest all shots. And I think we did a great job of that, and that's what helped us win. Next question is from John Blau from the Herald Times in Bloomington. Uh, hey, Cam. Um, obviously, Trent and Watford, his brother Christian, played here uh, a while back. I mean, how, how important was that to him? I mean, did he talk about that at all, just being able to play uh, in Bloomington? And how important was he, I guess, to how you guys played today in terms of the win? No, I didn't really. I didn't hear Trent talk about playing in Bloomington. I feel like he just, you know, excited to play another game, especially in the NCAA tournament. And so having to be here, so I feel like he was just pumped up just to play in the NCAA tournament. And Trenda had a great game. I think he had a double-double, and we need him to do that for us to win, make a deep run in the tournament, rebound, make plays, and score and score inside. So I felt like he did a good job of that today, and we're just going to build on that for Monday. Next question is from Sheldon Mickles from The Advocate. 
Hey, Trendon, uh, how tough was that defense to go against early? I, I know you y'all had a, a tough time. You were 0 for 5 before you hit a, a shot. Um, what what did they do to kind of throw y'all out of rhythm early? Uh, nothing really. I feel like we just missed um, we missed easy shots that we normally make. Uh, I don't think they did anything too special for us to um, start off slow like that because I missed a few open shots. Javante missed a few open shots. Trendon missed a few. Everybody missed a few. Darius days. I mean, we just had a rough start, but we picked it up. Next question is from Jared Joseph. And Jared, if you could uh, identify your affiliation, please. Hey, I'm with WVLA and WGMB in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, Cam, you know, your defense, as I already mentioned, has been on another level as of late. What really stood out as far as your def the team's defensive effort in this game? Uh, we got stops when we needed. Uh, we went on a stretch in the second half where we got like four or five stops in a row and we scored on it. So I feel like that's what helped us um, helped us pull away because we got stops. And that's what we really, really need to do in this tournament for us to make a deep run. Get stops because we can score with anybody in the tournament. I feel like we just got to get, you got to sit down on the defensive end and get these stops. And I think we can do that. Our final question will come from Michael Cobble. And Michael, if you could please identify your affiliation, I'd appreciate it. Sure thing. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Cam, your ability to get into the defender and instigate that contact, how critical is that to your game? And how hard do you work on that? And because you're so successful at it today. Oh, it was just natural. I don't really work on stuff like that. You know, I just I just figured that I had to get to the free throw line for, for me to have a good night. So I did whatever I had to do to get to the line, and it helped, and it worked. So you got to keep building on from that. Thank you, Cameron, for your time and best of luck in the next round. We will be joined momentarily by Coach Wade. And for those of you on the call, again, we would ask that you use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. And for those of you who are identified without an affiliation, again, you can text me at 812-322-1437, and I can make the change. That is something the NCAA is asking us to do, and I hope we will help you in later rounds unless you can change the setting yourself. Coach, uh, we will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Wade and then go to questions. Again, use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. And when you are called on, please state your name and affiliation. Coach, go ahead and give us a brief opening statement, and then we will go to questions. Yeah, really proud of our guys. I thought we really guarded in the first half. Our offense was a little bit raggedy. Uh, but we guarded, and that kept us in the game. And then we went on a spurt there at the end of the half get the nine-point lead, and then the 9-0 the, the run to start the second half was huge. Um, three guys with double-doubles. Andre Hyatt was phenomenal. Four blocks, 13 and 10, seven offensive rebounds. I thought he was just tremendous. Trendon and, and Days did what they do. And then, obviously, Cam was, was phenomenal getting to the free throw line and attacking and, and making plays. So it was a total, um, total, total team effort. I thought our guys were locked in and were really, really prepared. And we're going to need to turn it around quick for Monday. OK, we've got a lot of questions out there. So we'd ask you would limit it to uh, one each time you're on there. Our first question comes from Glenn West of SI. Hey, well, you know, it really seemed like, you know, when you guys were struggling there in that first half, um, 
your defense really kind of kept you in that game. I mean, just what defensively was working so well for you guys throughout the entire? Well, I think I think if you haven't seen the switching, the switching's difficult to play against, especially when they're using their screening angles to create. They're using their screens, off ball screens, and on ball screens to create the angles to get their guys downhill. When you when you can switch and stay in front of everybody. Um, makes it very, very uh, difficult um, on uh, you know on the other team, and so I, th I thought the switching um, really bothered them. We forced them into some contested jump shots, and were able to to sit there with a the high hand and and contest those uh, and, and, and contest those looks. But I thought our guys were locked in and, and knew where the shooters were, and uh, our switching was was on point. Next question comes from Jared Joseph from WVLA. Hey, well, the offense, of course, really struggled in the first half. What specifically was St. Bonaventure doing to, you know, limit y'all so much through the first 20? Well, we, we didn't have very good spacing. They had us they had us muddled up in the middle. We had three guys above the free throw line too much. We, we, we just had um, poor, poor spacing. And then they did a great job. They, they moved 21 around. Our whole plan was to pull 21 away from the basket so we could drive it in there and make some plays and they they started them off on Hyatt then they'd put them on days in transition and we just couldn't we couldn't pick at the matchup like we wanted to um, for part of the first half and then we were able to settle in and, and and get into rhythm against what they were doing and and then you know you've got elite scorers like Cam Thomas and you got Andre Hyatt and Darius Days on the offensive glass like that um, you know that that helps quite a bit. Next question comes from Michael Cobble of WBRZ. Well, uh, we often talk about your bad habits, you know, coming up in the game, but you guys, all your good habits were on display today, you know, sharing the ball, spreading movement, defending, rebounding. How impressed were you with just your team's poise, especially when you consider this was their first tournament experience for some of these guys? Yeah, great guard play wins in tournaments. Um, and, uh, you know, I, th I thought our guys were prepared. You know, I told our guys last night, I said, you're prepared and you're ready. Nobody in this room should be nervous. Like, we're prepared and we're ready. You get nervous when you ain't ready. And our guys were ready to go. We, we, we had two walkthroughs. I mean, we, 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 we prepared to the nth degree uh, for this game, both offensively and defensively. And our guys were ready. And you want guys that perform on the big stage that can make plays in big moments, and we did that today. All right, our next question comes from Ron Higgins of Tiger Rag. Ron's asleep. Okay, let's go to Sheldon Mickles of The Advocate. Sheldon's in the building somewhere. He must have a bad connection. Hey, this is Ron. Can you hear me? Yeah, Ron, I got you. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the early cold shooting, was that a case of nerves? And also, what do you say in those timeouts? Just, we're gonna, just, just keep playing defense. We're going to play through this, just, just play on? Yeah, I mean, we were getting stops. That's what I was more excited about. The offense always comes around. I mean, we scored 76 points on a, on a great team. I think we had four points in the first eight minutes of the game. Um, and so, you know, the offense always comes around for us. It's about getting stops and rebounding, which is what we, we did a great job of. And, and, you know, I knew as long as we were getting stops and getting rebounds, we were going to be, uh, we were going to be in pretty good shape. And so I was focusing on the positive with that and just get our guys to calm down and let's get some easy ones on offense. The one more three to Javante where he hit that, that really, really helped us out. Sheldon, are you available? Okay, if not, we'll go to Scott uh, Ravelay from the uh, Baton Rouge Advocate. One advocate guy can pinch it for, for the other. Will, I uh, haven't been on all your many Zoom calls this year, so forgive me if you talked about this before, but what what made Andre a starter for you? I mean, you have all these stars, and, and, and I'm not saying he's not a good player, but but what, what about his game has allowed him to hang in there and be a starter? And obviously today he had maybe his best game. Yeah, I mean, what you saw today, I mean, that's what we see every day in practice, and he actually shoots it really, really well. Um, but, you know, I trust him. He's, he's steady. You know where he's going to be. And this is why, you know, as a coach, you stick with guys. We, we, we went away from him a little bit there in the middle of the year, but he earned that starting spot. It's not like we just 
you know, hand out starting spots like Halloween candy or something on Halloween. You show up and you get it. But, I mean, he had earned it. He had earned it in his preseason and how hard he worked. And, you know, as a head coach, I, I trust that. And we trust that. And, um, you know, he came up. He came up huge for us. He came up huge for us against Alabama. He came up huge for us in, 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 uh, in this game here. And that's why you, uh, that's why you stick with guys. Next question comes from Billy Embody. Hey, Will. Uh, I asked Cam about this, but uh, Javante not having a turnover today, how important was that? And just he seemed to get you guys in the right spots, you know, to produce offensively and just it allowed all the guys to, you know, be able to contribute. It was huge. We talked about, you know, we're, you know, you just don't have as many possessions against Bonaventure because of how they run their offense, how they move, how they cut. You know, they're, they're going to take a lot of time off. And us not turning the ball over and not giving up a bunch of offensive rebounds were, were two huge keys um, coming into the game. And I thought Javante um, did a great job, um, you know, playing, um, you know, just, just playing a solid, solid uh, floor game. Next question is from John Blau, the Bloomington Herald Times. I asked him about this, but uh, Trenton Watford, obviously his older brother, Christian, has a history in this building. Um, Trenton came in, obviously had that double-double. I mean, how happy were you for him to be able to put the performance up that he did today? Very happy. The Watfords love Assembly Hall. Uh, he was so excited to play here. He texted me as soon as he knew this is where we were playing, and Christian texted me, and he was excited. Christian and the family was obviously uh, in, in the arena today, and so they were – uh, they were they were really really uh, fired up, and I was just I was so proud of him to uh, hit the three and and to be able to play well um, in a place that's that's so special to to their family. I believe Next this question. was the the ten year anniversary of the watch shot. I think is that correct? That'll be in December. Yep, there we go. Okay. Next question, uh, Kevin McCaskill from Forest Park. Hi, uh, Kevin McCaskill Jr., FP Sports, Forest Park Media, uh, Springfield, Mass. Coach, do you think uh, Josh Gray will get any minutes going forward in the tournament? We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll see. You know, we're going to need him. You know, against uh, you know, assuming Michigan beats Texas Southern, I haven't seen a score yet, but um, you know, we're going to need some big bodies. We've played Josh when we played Mississippi State, who had big bodies with a Doe and Tolu Smith. Now I know. Um, Hunter Dickinson's a, a, a different, um, you know, he's a, he's a different animal and he's a, he's, a, he's a tremendous, tremendous player, one of the best freshmen and one of the best post players in the country. So anytime we've played against bigger bodies and bigger guys, uh, we've thrown Gray in there. So I think there's a, there's a good chance that, um, that, that, that you'll see him in that Michigan game. Is there any chance uh, Sharif O'Neal comes back this, this season? No, he's out. He's got a foot injury and, and uh, we've shut him down probably six weeks ago for the rest of the season. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations Thank you. on the win. Thank you. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ. Um, Will, just your all's ability to play through the fouls and um, to manage those fouls, especially in the first half. I, again, I guess maybe kind of speaking to the poise and and uh, understanding of the moment from your team. Yeah, I mean, I, we've always played guys with two fouls. I think we're like top 25 in the country in terms of minutes played with two fouls. Everybody always what ifs, worst case scenarios will – all right, what if you hold him out for five minutes and the lead goes away and then he only ends up with three fouls for the entire game? I don't even think we had a guy get to four fouls um, today. Smart may have, but I don't even think we had a guy get to four fouls. So we're always going to play our guys with two fouls. Now we're going to be smart when we're on defense. We're going to sub guys in and out and, and that sort of thing. But we're always going to play our guys with fouls, especially um, in these type situations and winner go home situations. Final question goes to Matt Trent. And Matt, if you could identify your affiliation, please. Hey, Coach. Matt Trent with WBRZ TV yep. here in Baton Rouge. It feels like to me you checked off all the boxes this week that you were talking about that you needed to to be successful rebounding, good defense. Do you think this was the perfect game at the perfect time? And now do you think you can – sustain this level of play going forward? Well, we can certainly play better. Our second half defense left a lot to be desired. We got driven too much. Um, but I think, you know, we've played we've played a lot more physical lately ever since that Vanderbilt home game. So those two, Vanderbilt, Missouri, the three tournament games today, we were really physical. We did a great job on the glass. And so, you know, we're going to have to play our best game of the season 
uh, on Monday. There's no doubt about that. And so hopefully we're building towards that and can, and can reach a crescendo on Monday. All right, Coach, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much, and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Okay, that's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Once again, we thank you for joining us.
Thank you for joining us, Coach. We will yes. we will begin with an opening statement from Coach Schmidt and then go to questions. Uh, again, for the media, please use the raised hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. So, Coach, please go ahead and give us an opening statement, yeah, and then we'll go to questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of our effort. Um, you know, we didn't play. We needed to play our A game against um, LSU, um, and we didn't. I thought early on we had some chances. Um, I thought, you know, it was important for us to get off to a good start. And I thought defensively we did a decent job, but it, it seemed like it was four to two for, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, we had some looks um, we didn't make, um, you know, and then they started making some shots. And, um, you know, I thought we fought back. Second half, they got off to a good start. And I'm a, you know, big advocate for the, you know, the first four minutes of the second half are, are really, really important. And I, and I thought that they, uh, they came out and had two three-point plays, one three-pointer and one in one. Um, but I thought our guys, you know, fought, you know, they, they beat us. You know, I, I thought defensively we didn't do a, a, a terrible job. Um, you know, we, we fouled, um, you know, Thomas a little bit too many times. Uh, and then we got out-rebounded. And that's, you know, one of our strengths. Um, we got out-rebounded by, um, by 19. Um, you know, second chance points by 10. So that, that, that was a big difference. Um, and, and we didn't shoot the ball uh, the way we needed to against, uh, against a, a really athletic team. But, you know, give all the credit to LSU. They played really well. And, um, you know, we wish them the best of luck. Okay, thank you, Coach. Uh, we will begin our questions with uh, Jeff Uvino from the Intrepid. Jeff, go ahead. Jeff, go ahead. You got down in the second half, especially as it got later. Um, did you want to keep playing that game, or did you want to speed it up and start hitting shots I, to come back? Yeah, I, I couldn't hear the beginning of it. I said we knew coming in you wanted to play slow when you got down in the second half, especially as it got later. Was the goal to, to speed it up? Or yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you know, you get down, and, you know, I, I thought, you know, the key going into the game was we got to control uh, tempo. And you, if you look at the score, you know, we held them below their, their, um, their average. Um, and I thought we did a decent job in everybody um, but Thomas. Um, and, and like I said, they hurt us on the backboard. Um, but, you know, when you get down, you know, you, you got to push the ball and you got to play a little bit quicker, and, and that's to their advantage. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Rachel Lindsay with the Buffalo News. Go ahead, Rachel. Mark, your team had a lot of offensive issues, particularly in the first half with the shooting. It was almost... Uh, the, the makes were almost non-existent. What did LSU to do to stop your team's rhythm early on? I thought well, we were getting some good looks um, in, in the first half, and you know we were missing some shots. And you know that's you know, as, I, as I said, offense is fickle. Um, but I thought we were getting some decent looks. Um, you know, maybe you know a couple of them were rushed, but we we got some open looks that we didn't make. And I thought that was a huge key to the game. We needed to get off to a good start, and we were getting some looks and. Uh, they weren't going down and, um, you know, so. But I, I thought from an offensive standpoint, it, you know, like I said, you know, it wasn't perfect, but I thought we were getting so, some some good looks and, you know, sometimes those just don't go down and um, it's disappointing, but uh, give LSU credit. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from uh, Mark Gone from Buffalo News. Yes, Mark, uh, just uh, Kyle's game, game offense today. I mean, obviously his shot wasn't falling. Just uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you think of his game? And, you know, what did you tell him during the game to try to get him going? Yeah, just go. You know, he had six assists, zero turnovers, uh, five assists, zero turnovers. He had some open shots, and sometimes they don't go in. You know, he, mi he missed some easy ones. It's just that's the nature of the game. You know, he's a great player, great competitor. Um, you know, he kept on playing. Uh, he just the ball just didn't go in, and um, sometimes that happens. And then lastly, you know, you look at the LSU's season stats on defense, and you know there was um, uh, something made of you know they've been inconsistent and inconsistent team on defense this year. Their defensive stats weren't overwhelming, but you know what did you think? Like their length on the wing, the way they closed out on the threes. Just what did you think? Yeah, they you know they they their stats are very similar to us. You know, forty percent. You know, 33% from threes. Um, you know, it's they're they're a good team, athletic team. I, like I said, I thought we got some good looks. We we missed some shots early, um, but they're a good team. You know, and and when they they were disciplined, they were focused, and when they played like that, you know, they're, they're hard to beat. You know, you look at you know what they did in the Southeast Conference tournament. 
you know, had a, you know, they had a chance to, to, to win the game. You know, they had, they had, you know, a shot at the end to beat Alabama. So um, we knew what we were getting into, you know, playing LSU, and, and they were focused, and, and they played really well. Our next question will come from Chucky Maggio. Chucky, go ahead. Coach, how big of a factor did Dom's injury in the first half play in the offensive struggles? Yeah, it, it hurt. Um, you know, Dom played like a 50%. Give Dom credit. He, he's, he's, he's a really tough kid, and, you know, he was hurting, as you saw. Um, you know, went back and get retaped, and, you know, he was, he was a shell of himself. And, you know, they beat us on the backboard, and, you know, Dom is one of our better rebounders, you know, can get, can get the ball. He just couldn't move. But you know, no excuses. You know, like I said, LSU, you know, they beat us. Um, but, you know, Dom wasn't – Dom wasn't Dom. You know, he just – you know, early on when, you know, in that little loose ball, um, he got twisted up and, um, you know, and he fought through it and give Dom credit. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't go to the bench. He didn't make excuses. Um, he just tried to fight through it. And, you know, that's, that, that's a part of the game. That's a part of the game. Okay, our next question is going to come from uh, J.P. Butler with the uh, Times Herald. Go ahead, J.P. Yeah, Coach, uh, obviously these games hurt so much and to the point, and, um, you know, of course you don't want to lose and go out that way. And I know you don't want to look ahead yet, but is it a different feeling a at all after a game like this, maybe in that locker room, knowing that, uh, you know, the whole team does come back ne next year and, um, you know, maybe can play for this opportunity again? Is it different at all? No, no. It's like there's only two teams in this country, you know, maybe the CIT. You know, three teams if there's if there's a CIT that will end uh, with a win. So everybody's going to feel like we do. Um, you know, everybody but three teams. So yeah, we got the 24-hour rule. You know, our guys are, are disappointed, they're devastated. You know, it's this is what they do. You know, they put all their time 6 a.m.s and every day and summer times and lifting weights and you know, you know the stuff that they went through with with the pandemic. And you know, this this was a really hard season. You know, this wasn't easy. And you know, give all the credit to our players. They they fought. Um, and they're really, really disappointed, you know, and it's good that, that, you know, they're disappointed. We, you know, I'm disappointed, you know, because you put so much into it, you know, if you're not disappointed, there's something wrong, you know, so we'll get the 24 hour rule and, you know, we'll, we'll realize, as I told the team in the locker room, we did some amazing things, you know, the first time we've won, you know, both the regular season and the, um, in the conference tournament, you know, it's, we, we don't need this game to, to, you know, for us to look back and say, you know, it's disappointing, um, absolutely not. You know, it's you know we didn't play well today. You know, we lost to a better LSU team, um, but this 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 game doesn't define uh, what our guys did. Um, we had a special year, and they're disappointed now, but they'll realize um, what a year that we had when they when they look back at it. Um, you know, in the, in the next couple of days. Right. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we'll go back to uh, Rachel Lindsay from Buffalo News. Mark, what kind of factor was Cameron Thomas for LSU, particularly in the second half? Well, he's a pro. You know, he's a first-round pick. You know, he's a good player. You know, he's, he's going to be making millions of dollars one day. Um, you know, I, I thought we did a decent job in the first half. Um, you know, I think it was two for seven. He had seven points. Um, you know, we followed him too many times and, you know, whatever. He was, I think, second in the, in the country in, in foul shot attempts. So he does a good job of drawing fouls. And he hit a couple threes, deep ones, but, you know, he got off, you know, when we got to the foul line. And um, against good shooters or good scorers, you know, you, you don't want them to get to the foul line and give them cheap ones, and they get their confidence, and the rim starts, you know, looking a little bit bigger. But he's, he's a great talent, and um, we'll be watching him on, in, in the NBA one day, maybe, maybe next year. Okay, our next question is going to be from uh, Mark Gaughan from Buffalo News. Go ahead, Mark. I can't hear anything. Okay, hold on. Okay, Coach, uh, I don't see any additional questions at this time, so thank you very much. Okay, appreciate thank you. It. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, for the media on the call, we will be joined momentarily by Jaron Holmes. Again, please use this time to raise uh, your hand if you'd like to ask a question.
Okay, we're now joined by Jaron Holmes, who scored a team high 18 points uh, this afternoon. Again, for the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When, you're, when you are called on for your question, please state your name and your affiliation first. And we're gonna start our uh, questions with uh, Michael Hogan. Michael, go ahead. Hey, Jaron, it's Mike Hogan from Staff Integrator Only. And I just wanted to ask you a little bit about Dom Welch. It looked like he was struggling through some pain there. Uh, what does that mean to you? See a teammate, you know, kind of go through that and, and play through an injury. It's, it's special because Dom's a special person. Um, he cares about our, he cares about every single one of us, and um, like I like I've been saying and preaching, we have genuine love for each other. And um, when Dom went out, he kept telling us, "I'll be back, I'll be back," and um, he was working just to get back. So I, I, when he went down, I knew he was coming right back. I knew he wasn't done for the game, and um, for him to come back and and finish it out like we um, like we started, um, it's just it's it's emotional. It's, it's big. Um, He's a great guy. He's a great human. I think um, a lot of people don't see those type of things um, because they're behind closed doors. But um, he's a brother for life to me, and um, he's family, and um, he uh, he's just a special guy, and um, it just shows his toughness and his love for the game. Honestly. Our next question will come from Mark Gone with the Buffalo News. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, can you, you know, you were uh, uh, guarding Cam a lot of the day. Just uh, what did you think of uh, that assignment? Uh, how tough is he? And, you know, how, what did you think of uh, guarding him? Um, Cam Thomas is a great player. Um, it was a very tough assignment. Um, one of the things was trying to keep him off the foul line. I don't know how many foul shots he, he got, but oh, 11 for 13. So, I mean, uh did the we did the best we could you know um it was it was great guard I, I always want to um myself is challenge myself and um he was the best player on that team best scorer on that team I wanted the assignment um didn't get it done today um but I got in foul trouble before so it was it was a lot easier for him to you know um kind of attack me um try to go at me you know I'm not trying to pick up that fifth or that fourth so I mean, he's a great player. He's a pro um, and a highly touted guy. But um, we have just as highly touted guys on, over on our end, too. And uh, I think we showed that today. Um, our next question is going to come from Chucky Maggio. Chucky, go ahead. Chucky Maggio, Pick and Splinters. Uh, Jerem, in the first half, do you think it was more of a case of just shots not falling for you guys? Because uh, you were keeping everything else in the stat line pretty consistent. Um. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't our best shooting day. Um. Shots. Shots didn't fall for us, but. I mean, that's life. That's basketball. Sometimes it just doesn't fall. Um. Those are shots we we want. Those are shots we normally hit. Um. And um, they just didn't not, didn't fall today. Um. And theirs fell. So. We did, we did what we were supposed to do. We got the shots we wanted. Um, every shot that we wanted, it just went in and out, or we missed it. Um, but ultimately, those are shots we practice, and those are shots that we, um, <clears throat> we work hard at and that um, we trust in each other to make. Also, I know it's obviously still really fresh with the loss, but when you think about this season and all you guys overcame and all you guys accomplished, what is your main takeaways right now? enjoying life, enjoying this moment. We just played LSU in March Madness at Indiana University. Like this is a historic, historical arena um, while in, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it's just, a, this is something that, you know, I'll be able to tell my children about, um, I'll talk about forever. Honestly, this is a magical experience. Not everybody gets to um, experience March Madness. And today we did, and we got to play a really good team. And um, we gave it all we had, and that's, that's, we left it all on the floor. And that's, that's all I could ask for, and that's all I tried to do today. 
especially playing, um, you know, a tough team like LSU. But we we definitely um, we definitely will look at the tape, and you know, we're not gonna hang our heads. This is a year to, for excitement. You know, we are eight ten champs, regular season and um, tournament. It hasn't been done in what forty two years, and like this team is magical. It's just emotional because. You never know at the end of the year if this same group will come back. So um, it's just kind of emotional on that end because uh, I love all these guys so much, and I I do anything for them. I I, I put that on everything. I do anything for them. Love them to death. Our next question will come from Rachel Lindsay from the Buffalo News. Rachel, go ahead. Darren, your team cut the lead down to 10 points three times in the second half and to nine points. What did LSU really do to kind of keep you guys, push them off, and reopen its lead? Um, they hit a couple shots. They hit a couple threes. Um, and they were getting to the line, slowing the game down. Um, and they, you get to the line and you let a shooter um, just continue to get to the line and see the ball go through the net. That's good for him. Um, so they got to the line a lot. Um, I don't know if they, um, I, I don't really know the whole, I mean, their, their guys had a couple guys with double doubles. I mean, we could have boxed out more, but then again, like the ball just wasn't falling our way. Um, we played hard, um, and we, we fought together and that's all that matters. Honestly, um, we didn't come out victorious, but we learned something today and we're going to use it as scar tissue and, uh, just keep going, keep going. Like we're, I think we're all juniors. The whole starting five is all juniors and that's a fact. So we have another year and we're just going to continuous, continuously work. So um, LSU, they did a good job of really getting to the paint and hitting shots when we tried to double Watford um, and take the ball out of his hands. Um, they had good shots and I mean, they got a couple offensive rebounds. So they were just getting easy looks. They, they were falling today for them and they were hitting shots. So um, kudos to LSU. Our next question will come from uh, J.P. Butler with the Times-Herald. J.P., go ahead. Yeah, Jaron, congrats on a great season, man. Thank you, uh, thank you. You, ju you just touched on it, but I, I did want to ask, you know, for, as painful as uh, a loss like that can be, you guys are in kind of a unique position where you could conceivably have everybody back next year. How much uh, do you think a loss like today, um, just kind of how the, the way it went, uh, how much can that feel you guys going into next year? We think. Um. Every guy in that locker room is a competitor, and I know one thing about a competitor is he wants to be the best and continue to be the best. And right now, um, today we weren't the best, and that's a problem for us. And um, that's gonna that's gonna be in our heads for a long time, but it's just gonna make us better. It's going to just make us keep fighting and working hard and coming closer together. Like, this is just, overall, this is just a blessing to be here, you know, we, to make it with these guys and to make it with these coaches. And the year we had, um, I know for a fact <coughs> that everybody back in Olean is, is happy and proud of us. I know Dr. DePiro is looking down on us, um, and he's super proud. And... You know, with that with that loss, you know, just to use this game and us making a March Madness to up uplift a couple spirits back home, um, and Olean and the DePiro family, it's a blessing. You know, we'll be back. We'll be back, for sure. We'll be back, and that's that's all I have to say. We'll be back, and we're not going to stop working. We'll be back. Right. Thanks. Next question is going to come from Tommy Valentine with SBU TV. Tommy, go ahead. Hey, Jaron, how's it going, man? Uh, first off, congratulations on a great season. Uh, the cameras picked up late stages, Kyle Lofton getting very emotional on the bench. In that situation, this is somebody who's one of your best friends, the leader on this team. In that situation, what do you say to him in that moment? Um... <clears throat> Well, that's a good time. That's a good question, Tommy. I mean, you got to talk after this. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, Kyle is my best friend. Um, to see your best friend emotionally hurt, and to see him 
crying and in pain and and you don't want to see that um he's worked his butt off um countless hours in the gym just like every single one of us to see him cry and to see him really just like go into his emotions honestly it's just it's hard to see but when that happens you know that person left everything on the floor he might be disappointed but in the outcome but you know he left everything on the floor um he fought today he's gonna continue to fight Kyle's a great guy he's a great person you know a good basketball player an even better person you know um and I just hugged him in the locker room and, and you know, just really just said, told him I loved him. You know, we both had an emotional moment, moment we were all crying, but I just told him I loved him. He's my roommate. Um, he's my brother. We ride to school together every day. Like, we're going to be talking about this a long time. It just brought us closer together, honestly. You, when you see somebody cry, you normally don't say, um, you see the quote is like, men don't cry, but I, I believe that real men cry. Real men show emotion, and that's the that's the true showing of a man. Um, um, one who le wears their heart on their sleeve, and um, he does that every time he goes out there on the court, and every time um, he's in the locker room with us, and you know we're having a good time. He's an emotional guy, you know. Everybody on this team is emotional, you know. It's, it's a tough loss, but um, we're gonna become better from it. We're gonna become better people. And we're going to remember this and better players. And we're going to remember this for the rest of our lives, sharing this moment together, you know. Me, we'll probably laugh about it 20 years from now, me and Kyle talking about we were crying, holding each other. So, <laughs> you know, I just told him, you know, I loved him. And that I'm proud of him of everything he's accomplished and that um, I want him to go for more and continue to stay hungry, and, you know. And our final question will come from uh, Jeff Uvino from The Intrepid. Hey, Jaron, congratulations on a great season. Um, we know you, the Jeff. LSU's roster is talented from top to bottom. Can mm -hmm. you talk about what it was like to play against a team with that kind of talent? Um, Magical. You always want to play against the best. Um, I, don't, I think they were just in the SEC championship and lost by a, a bucket. They're a great team, you know. Um, as a competitor, you want to go against the best. And that's what March Madness is about. It's the best, uh, the best teams in here. In, in this um, tournament, so uh, for us to play against play against them, um, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. You know, um, you know, all the time you don't get to play LSU, or all the time you don't get to play Michigan, or you don't get to play Texas. Um, today we 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 went out there and fought for each other, and um, ultimately we didn't come out with the victory, but we proved something to ourselves and to a lot of people that doubted us at the beginning of the season that we wouldn't be here, um, and they continuously doubt us every year. Um, just because of the facilities and they don't think the players are as good, but we're going to keep proving people wrong. And um, today I think we showed a lot of people what we're, we're made of just from that little town in Olean. Okay, Jaron, thanks so much for your time. We really, we greatly appreciate it. Thank thanks you so, so much. much. Thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes the St. Bonaventure Post Game News Conference. A transcript of uh, Coach Schmidt's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with a recording of this.